Today we're going to be working on this Nintendo Switch OLED. This has been sent in by a customer for repair and apparently it got no power. So the customer sent this in and he said on the ticket that he bought it recently and about a week ago it just suddenly died with no signs of life at all. But when he plugged it into a USB and meter, it does show current draw. So let's have a look first of all and see what's going on. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dakota. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. It really helps me out and apparently around 60% of people who watch the videos are not subscribed so I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. If you do need to organise a repair you can check out the website consolefix.shop, you can book in a repair, get in touch, get a quote etc etc and you can also buy parts and supplies for games consoles to repair your own devices as well. So let's just see what's going on with this now that I've shilled the crap out of my store and we get 110 milliamps so that looks like it's either trying to charge when it wants to focus trying to charge or it's got a short on the board so let's have a look we're going to open it up and see what's going on with it so i'm going to first of all just put something underneath the screen so i don't damage it don't want to be damaging the device so i'll just grab a microfiber cloth there there we go i'm going to leave it plugged in while i'm actually taking it apart just so i can see if the current increases if the current increases that means that it's probably charging the battery or well very slowly anyway but if it doesn't increase then it's got a chance that it could be short on the board so I always leave it plugged in just so I can see what's going on and monitor it while I'm taking the thing apart it just gives me a better idea of what's actually going on with it so I'll get this apart I won't make you sit through this it's pretty boring let's just get it apart and uh, we'll see what's going on okay so just as I started to take the first screw out it's jumped up to 0.49 amps so 490 milliamps that is not good because that means that it stands a chance that this could be either NAND or CPU related. I really hope this isn't CPU or NAND related, but unfortunately there's nothing we can do if it is. Someone's come to say hello, so I just thought I'd uh, interrupt the video for this very important message from Stripes. Hello Stripes. Say hello to the camera. Hello Stripes. Stripes is just a baby. Please subscribe. It'll upset Stripes if you don't, see? He's happy at the minute because people are subscribing. But if you don't, you'll get really upset. He's a really lovely kitty. Don't, dis don't disappoint him. Back to the regular programming. He's going to sleep behind me by the look of it. Either that will mess on my desk, one of the two. Ah, he's chose... Hey! Stop it. Get off the customer's device. You can't fix it. Come on. You can't fix this. This is my job. I need to earn money. You're not having dreamies with the money. He won't leave me alone. I'll go and put him in the house. Righty oh, so just about done here in terms of disassembly. What I am gonna do is just grab another board and I'm just gonna charge the battery while I'm working on the device. It'll uh, kind of speed up the process a little bit. So I've got a little board here. I'll say a little board. I've got a board here. I know it's a Nintendo Switch original board, but it should still charge a battery. The connectors are the same, so should be okay with that. I'm just going to get rid of that thermal paste as well. So the one thing I have noticed about this as well is the fact that someone's been inside here, which isn't a problem as long as no one's messed anything up, sort of thing. You know, I oftentimes get boards come in where someone's worked on it they haven't told me about it and you know they've screwed something up like damaged some traces on the port or ripped a trace on the Pi 3 USB chip which is the video chip that can cause uh, this particular issue and things like that or they've attempted to mod the device and you know damaged the clock line or something like that but that's not the case on this this board looks fairly clean so I think someone's just been inside here and changed thermal paste and stuff because that wasn't factory but yep yeah, shouldn't be a problem I'm going to have a look around the board under the microscope, see if I can see anything, and uh, take you all along for the ride, I suppose. So the first thing and most important thing to do with any device before you work on it is to visually inspect it. It doesn't look like any mods have been attempted on this, so if there was a mod attempted, normally this shield would be cut, you know, where someone's soldered wires or a flex ribbon or whatever it is. 
I don't mess with the mods, but I do work on them in terms of removing the mod if someone messes it up. Right, that's the Poi 3 USB chip that I was on about. That's responsible for some of the charging circuit plus for the audio and video output, you know, to HDMI. Uh, we've got the M92 T36, that's a power management chip, so it could be something to do with that. We've got this IC here, which is called a fuel gauge, that tells the console how much power the battery's got. That can cause it. Although that looks fine. So, several different areas which are possibly the cause of this issue. Uh, the Wi-Fi IC, that thing there, that can cause it. Uh, BQ, this is a battery management chip. That can cause it, but it's very unlikely. If anything, it's going to be one of a couple of things. It could be M92 T36. It could be P13 USB or Pi3 USB, whichever way you want to call it. It could be this Max IC here. That's responsible for power. It could be the audio IC. And it can also be this fuel gauge, like I said. So there's quite a few different areas which you know could cause the issue. So I'm going to do some tests. Uh, this Max IC as well here, this uh, 77620H as well. That's a very common cause of the issue. So let's just have a look here. So I'm going to test this capacitor here and just see if we've got a short on that cap. If we have, then it can be either good or bad depending on what happens next sort of thing. So if we've got a short on this cap, it can be the Pi 3 USB chip, but it can also be the Max IC and it can also be the CPU and RAM. It's linked to basically everything on the board. So it doesn't really tell us much, but if we do get a short on here, then we can remove the chip and see if it clears the short. If it does, then great, it's a nice easy repair. If not, then you know, we, we might have a bit of a job on our hands. Yeah, that's dead short. Okay. So, yeah, the reason... Oh, no, it's not. Okay, excess current in the capacitor. Never mind. That is 586 ohms. But that's in continuity mode, not resistance mode. So, let's test M92 T36. Let's check around here for shorts. 368 ohms in continuity mode, that's fairly low. That might not be a good thing. Okay, uh, right, so M92 is testing fine. Let's have a look around BQ. That is testing fine. What about around the 77812? Right, that's coming up as low impedance. Got 14.5 ohms in resistance mode there. I'm not sure if that's normal or not. I don't think I have a I have an OLED board to hand which I can use for testing. I'm not entirely sure on that. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to plug in the battery, and I'm also going to plug in the USB. But I'm going to plug the USB in to my computer, and I'm going to see if it loads up in RCM mode. So RCM mode is recovery mode, and common misconception is that you can't get into RCM mode on patched motherboards. That's not the case. RCM mode on a Nintendo Switch will kick in if it doesn't detect a NAND. If it doesn't detect a NAND, that is bad, because basically that means that it doesn't detect the storage, and that is paired to the motherboard, which means we cannot replace it. So I want to just see if it actually shows up in RCM mode, because that would given 0 0.48, 0 0.49 amp current draw on the uh, power supply, on the on the ammeter. So I'm going to up onto my PC. I didn't hear a ding. Yes, I did hear a ding. That was a ding. 
That is not good. That is not good at all. So I'm on the desktop here then. I'm going to load up Tegra RCM GUI. And yeah, that is not good. That is very likely a dead hand. Right, okay, so this is not good at all. So this is telling me that the NAND is dead. And that is really bad because the NAND isn't replaceable at all. Unless you exploit the board, which is something I don't do. So what I'm going to do, I've got the battery plugged in right now. And I'm also going to plug in the charger again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, basically just plug it in, I've got that plugged in now, and I'm going to hunt for power, basically. I'm going to see if I can find power around the NAND. Okay, we've got 1.09 volts, we've got 1.8 volts there, and we've got 3.3 volts there. Right, okay, we've got power going into the NAND, that is not good. It's not good at all. Unfortunately, this means that the NAND is very, very likely dead. Either that, or someone's just held down the buttons and caused it to uh, to actually go into recovery mode, or RCM mode rather. So what I'll do, just to make absolutely sure before I pretty much end this video, and it's going to be a fairly quick video, I realise that, and it's not going to be a very interesting video. Uh, but then again, I mean, information is information, right? But what I'm going to do, just to make absolutely sure, is I'm going to put it all back together. Or rather, I'm going to put the board back in so as I can connect up the buttons. I'm going to press and hold the power button for like 20 seconds and just see if it comes out of recovery mode. Because it could just be that it's stuck in recovery mode because someone's held the button down for too long. I'm not going to rule that out. It's just, you know, until we actually get into this, we don't know. And I mean, yes, you can try it before you, you know, before you take it apart and whatnot, but. It's kind of not in my not in my uh, repair process because it's just incredibly incredibly well uh, rare. Sorry, not repair process, my diagnostic process because it's incredibly rare that that ever happens. You know where it just gets stuck in recovery mode. Usually, if it's in recovery mode, which it is now, it's because we have a dead hand, unfortunately. So it's just really not in my diagnostic process. You know, in terms of things to check first, it probably should be. You know, when we've got the case like this, probably should plug it into the PC and just check it before I do anything. And I think I might start implementing that. But at the minute, it's not looking great for this one. Uh, I mean, like I said, information's information at the end of the day. You know, we I do these videos and they're all genuine and honest. And, you know, I go through my fault-finding process. And if that helps someone to... You know, maybe realise that, oh, okay, well, I can check this on the PC because it's got those exact same symptoms, and great, you know, it's it's helped someone out, and it's worth it's worth the time in editing the video and stuff like that, which is why I do post some of the no fixes if they're interesting or if there's information in there which could be useful. But I'm not going to sit here and try replacing the EMMC because I know for a fact that it's paired to the board with a security key. Now, like I said, you can get around that. You can exploit the board so I could install a mod chip on this and exploit the board and I could repair a new NAND I could marry a new NAND but the thing is I don't offer mod chip services at all even for repair uh, you know repair purposes because it's just not worth getting down that rabbit hole and you know having to try and defend myself in court if I ever actually get taken to court by Nintendo and they are very very aggressive when it comes to protecting their IP and rightly so, you know, I mean, but, you know, in this case, yeah, it's, uh, it just sucks because, because they've paired the NAND with a security key, it means that I can't replace it, which means I can't repair it. It's really, really frustrating. Someone else could repair this. This is definitely fixable with the right tools and knowledge and the right, uh, the right service from the right person, but I'm not going to get into it. Nope. Well, I'm sitting here messing around trying to connect up all these ribbons and it's kind of pointless because I forgot to put these shields back on. So I'll just plug in the ribbons for the buttons and uh, well, we'll take it from there, I guess. 
I only realistically need the power button and the screen anyway. So I'm going to press and hold the power button. Wouldn't it be funny if that actually worked? And I've just wasted my time taking it all apart. <laughs> okay, it's not showing any signs of life. Nope. Let's see if anything happens with the ammeter. So we've got 0.49 amps. Let's see if the, the uh, ammeter resets or anything when I try to do that. No. I am pressing the power button, by the way. No, unfortunately not. It's not having any of it. All right, let's try pressing both the volume up and volume down. And press the power button. Press and hold the volume up and down buttons. No. Unfortunately not. Right, okay, I'm going to call this no fix. Uh, yes, it can be fixed, but for me, not an option, unfortunately. So that's going to suck a big one because the customer has also paid a uh, £20 expedited fee for this. So basically, I only received this four or five hours ago, and because he wants uh, expedited service, I've basically pushed it to the front of the queue for an additional fee. It's going to suck because I've still got to charge him regardless. Uh, but obviously, in terms of the actual repair attempt, you know, the diagnostics, that's no fix, no fee. It's just the expedited fee that he's got to pay for. It does suck, but that is unfortunately the price you pay, literally. Uh, um, you know, I've pushed it to the front of the queue. I've dropped everything to look at this. Um, so I've still got to charge that £20 for my time. It sucks, but it is what it is. Sorry this wasn't a fix, hopefully it at least allows you to uh, you know, see a little bit more in depth into the fault finding process and stuff like that. If you do want to see more repairs, mostly successful, but sometimes you do get the no fixes as well. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, all of that good stuff. I do live stream on Twitch quite regularly, and if you want to check me out over there, there'll be a link in the video description. And as I said, you can check out the website for parts, supplies, and to book your repairs as well. That's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.